I mean, I spend a lot, a lot of time helping actors to be real by going through the whole lives of the characters and their backgrounds and everything that bears on that moment. So that, in a way, uh, I've always said this, I mean, I aspire to the condition of documentary so that when you actually arrive at that moment, it has that kind of resonance, that reality. Um, <clears throat> now, obviously, what Jennings did was to go to this world with these real people that obviously didn't need to invent anything or to kind of learn about it but what his knack is is to make them feel very comfortable in their own context and to tap into what they know and to draw it into a formulated and um, structured piece of action. William Sansom who appears in fires were started, was a fireman, says that the picture of the way the fireman behaved in fires were started was absolutely authentic. It was absolutely as it was. There was only one significant difference. In real life, everybody was swearing all the time. In the film, they weren't. And I think that's another reason that the film survived, that they are genuine, they are authentic in that way. When we were doing the actual uh, farm and coming in with the uh, and the place was in flames, he himself was totally uh, unaware of any danger. He was marching about on the roof there, liable to fall off at any moment. Come down off that bloody roof! Standing on just the width of a, of a wall, and had no idea of, of, of the danger. But I can remember one of the camera crew, one of the junior camera crew standing next to me and saying, one step further back, Humphrey. What's that thing? How did the He had such a concentration on what he was doing that he had no idea of any danger there might be to himself. But then he was also uh, wanting everybody else to be unaware of any danger. And when the rookie, played by Bill Sansom, was supposed to find his way up this burning staircase. Humphrey wanted it to look very realistic, and so he was about to douse him in a cans of petrol. <laughs> At that moment, Bill absolutely refused. He got very, very angry. They thought that he was crackers, <laughs> but um, everybody was totally devoted to Humphrey and the film. They went, well, they went beyond the call of duty. I think during the war particularly, he underwent a kind of emotional education, which was also simultaneously a kind of political education. His actual contact when he worked on films like Fires Were Started with the actual firemen who'd fought the Blitz, the warmth, the sense of the sense of common purpose that he felt with these people, the sense of respect for the remarkable human qualities they showed deepens. And I think you, you get a sense that Jennings' films begin as rather cold, rather abstract, and rather distant. But as the war proceeds, and as his life proceeds, and as he becomes more mature, they grow in warmth, they grow in affection, and they grow, I think above all, the word one has to use is respect. They're profoundly respectful of the, of the people that they watch in a way that very, very few other films are. In the midst of filming, Jennings wrote to his wife and daughters who had been evacuated to New York. On the right side, on the right track at last. Never thrown myself into anything so completely. Really beginning to understand people and make friends with them, and not just looking at them and lecturing them. Also, should make me personally more bearable. In the audience tonight, I've brought along a couple of my uh, mates who were in the fire service with me. And, uh, well, I shall live, and they will live those nights over again when they see this picture. And I tell you this, that as you see it depicted here, so it was, and sometimes far worse. But there again, as I say, so it was, I'm just saying to you again that it's Humphrey's sincerity coming to the front again. And in conclusion, I'd like to say, if some of the greatness, if some of that man's personality brushed off on me as he went by, then I'm very grateful. Thank you.
last of Jennings wartime masterpieces is Diary for Timothy, which juxtaposes the life of a newborn baby with shots of the grueling final months of the war. In contrast with most of his great films, Diary for Timothy uses a voiceover, written by the distinguished novelist E.M. Forster in the form of a diary addressed to the infant. When you joined us, we'd been fighting for exactly five years. We had hated it, but we'd kept on at it to save our skins. And also because we had a feeling deep down inside us that we were fighting for you. For you and all the other babies. The first section of the film is the awful things that happened that autumn in 1944. And the poignancy is there's this baby in his pram, cosy in his pram, not realizing what's going on all around him. Arnhem's going terribly wrong. Uh, the war looks as though it's going to drag on yet again for another year. Morale is beginning to crack. All these shots of sort of rusty barbed wire. And the war is tired. People are tired. It's gloomy. It's the middle of October now. And the war certainly won't be over by Christmas. One third of all our houses have been damaged by enemy action. I think Diary for Timothy captures a mood. The word war weariness comes to mind. There is also, I think, a melancholy about that film which is very difficult to account for. Your mother's writing a Christmas card to your father. She has to post it now for he's out east. Christmas cards, letters, parcels are all going out now to our friends over the seas.